What's good? It's Calvin Wetzel from Her Hoop Stats back with another edition of the Wet Sets. Today, we're going to take a look at icing a ball screen using some examples from Georgia's overtime win over NC State last month. So what is ice coverage? On this play, you can hear the call for Kai Crutchfield to ice this screen from Jenna Stady. That means she's going to jump to the high side and force the ball handler away from the screen. Now let's check out an example on the other end. Watch as Sarah Ashley Barker ices this ball screen and forces Reina Perez into a tough baseline floater. This is ice coverage at its best. The goal is to prevent the ball handler from getting to the most dangerous playmaking spot, the middle of the floor, and bait them into difficult twos. Oftentimes, as you'll see here, on-ball defenders will sacrifice good defensive position in order to drive the opposing guard away from the screen. As we play this one back, Watch Jakia Brown-Turner put herself above Sarah Ashley Barker. Instead of staying between your player and the basket, you're staying between your player and the screener. That means you're relying on your help. Watch the terrific first and second help rotations by NC State here to force the steal. If you watched our video on drop coverage, you'll recognize the big's role in ice. It's basically the same as a drop. The key difference is where they're executed. Drop is used in the middle third, and ice is more for wing ball screens. That means ice is vulnerable in a lot of the same ways drop is. For one, it relies on the big keeping the ball in front. Elisa Kunin isn't able to do that here, so Q Morrison gets an open layup. It also leaves the pick and pop open, so stretch bigs can take advantage with threes, or if you're as talented as Kunin, pumping and driving. Check out our YouTube channel for more basketball content and be sure to follow at Her Hoop Stats on Twitter and Instagram for all the latest in women's basketball.